Greetings to the beautiful little city of Carpinteria. I just passed by a lot of the churches here. Reality Church, the Community Church, the Baptist Church, the Catholic Church, and a few others. Looking good, parking lot's full. So that's a good sign. But there's still some of you, a lot of you maybe, that have not yet accepted Jesus Christ here here as Savior on this beautiful Sunday, June 4, 2017. And I want to invite you to become a Christian and be baptized in the Spirit. I come in the name of the Lord, repent and be baptized, for the kingdom of heaven is near. For any of you here in Carpinteria who have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time to do so. Don't wait till it's too late. It's the only way to be saved, to go to heaven. To receive the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, you need to begin with confession of sins. Say to Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. Thank you for dying to save me. I welcome you into my heart and commit my life to you. Can you say that? Do you believe it? Do you know you're a sinner? We're all sinners. Even after you become a Christian, you'll still be a sinner, but hopefully you'll sin less. Become a little more holy, little by little, gradually, as you grow in faith in Christ. So if you're ready to bow down to the King and say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life, then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's a baptism in the Spirit. It's your faith that makes you Christian, faith that keeps you Christian. The baptism is a symbol and a seal, a ceremonial. So congratulations. Welcome to the body of Christ, the family of God. You're now on your, you can now be sure where you'll go when you die. It's called heaven. That's eternal paradise with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's our God. One God, three persons, the Trinity God. also in heaven you'll be there with the angels and the saints and all the fellow brothers and sisters in Christ who have died and passed onward. And you'll, you'll hear some argue about whether you go straight to heaven or purgatory or, you know, whether you, you lay in rest until the very last end time for everybody. Well, that's a theological argument. I just say you go to heaven, you know. And... You'll find out at the end time. I can't prove it. And I'm not saying it because I know it. I'm just saying that's the most simple way to sum it up for the time being. Especially when you're just trying to invite people to become Christians. You don't want to become too complicated. So, you know who else will be in heaven with you? Your family members. If they're Christian when they die. So if you have family members, brothers, sisters, mom, dad, son, daughter, cousins, uncles, grandpa, whatever the case may be, and they haven't yet accepted Christ, they're not Christians, they haven't died yet, now is the time to invite them to become Christian before it's too late. Maybe they've said no before, but now maybe they'll say yes because of you. They say, hey, my family member said yes, why, why shouldn't I? But they have to be, it has to be a sincere confession. You, you know, you got to realize you need somebody higher than you. You can't be the Lord of your own life. We're all going to die. We all can't, we, you know, no matter how smart, strong, great, beautiful you, you may be, it's all for naught at the end of this world. So why not make it worth it? Most people have an inkling of that in their in their mind, but some people's hearts are hardened by secularism. They just they've turned off God, and and we made it possible to do that here, and especially here in America. So beware of that. I think that's probably the uh, effect of liberalism. Anyways, I don't want to become political, but I am uh, more on the conservative side, moderate conservative. And so, now that you're a Christian, there's four things you should do as soon as possible. 
first, start talking to God, that's called prayer. Second, start reading the Word of God, that's the Bible. Third, start telling others about God, that's called being an evangelist, inviting them to become Christians, telling them about Jesus, salvation, how He died on the cross for our sins like I'm doing right now. You can also baptize now that you're a Christian. You don't have to be specially trained or ordained to do that. You can baptize in the spirit or in the water or both. You can invite others to be Christians in your own way. It's not, there's no formula, but you should have some aspect of confessing your sins and committing your life and making Jesus the Lord of your life, things like that. But you do it how you, you feel is right, as long as it's, it comports in general with the Holy Bible, which is our which is our rule book, so to say. But we don't live by, you know, just don't do this, don't do that. We live by do this, do this. It's more positive, affirma uh, affirmative. And it'll generally, it'll genuinely flow from you now that you're a Christian, especially if you've had a real true conversion uh, and you realize you know how lucky you are so to speak to have been dead in your because of your sins and now you're alive because Jesus set you free and forgave you forgives you so there's uh, there's an excitement especially if you're a new Christian you're going to really feel it you should hope well, not always, though. There's some who are intellectual and they're not even sure they're sinners, and but they're going along with it. So it might be a gradual dawning on for some people, depending on you know your personality. That's not to say that you're wrong. One one is wrong, the other is right. It's just different ways of growing in Christ. So don't say, oh, he must not be a Christian. He's not very excited. Well, maybe he keeps a lot of that those feelings within. You know, not everybody wears their heart on their sleeve, so to speak. All right, anyways, so that's the third thing, to be an evangelist, telling others about Jesus. And then fourth, you, uh, join a good church. And I, as I was saying, I just went through Carpinteria. I've been passing through this area, and I was attending to attend a few church service, or at least one, but I didn't get the timing right. Came into Reality Church halfway through, and... And I stopped over, I was going to go to the Baptist, but that didn't start till 10.30. And the community church was just about done. St. Joseph Catholic was supposed to have a 9 o'clock service, but they decided to combine the English and Spanish into the 10 o'clock, so everything was just a little bit off sync for me this morning. And I join, I go to all different types of churches, because I'm a, I'm a evangelist. I, I, I travel across the country and I just drop in on churches and I I don't take favorites over Catholic over Protestant or Baptist or Lutheran things like that because I believe the true church is as we all say when we recite the Nicene Creed is, is all of us all of us Christians so we should I, I get a little bit uh, concerned when we try to promote too much our own brand of Christianity and I like some of the Catholic aspects I like Protestant some Baptists they all have their unique things that when you put them all together it's beautiful like a, a nice salad or a uh, what do they call that a melting pot it's a good it's a good theme for the whole body of Christ and uh, so I do get a little concerned when I hear Catholic radio sometimes and they're, they're pushing too hard being Catholic rather than just being Christian, being, uh, you know, in Christ. Anyways, that's, a, that's more of an aside that I wanted to go to. But I wanted to, to you need now as a new Christian to start attending a church. I, you know, I encourage you to find one with uh, traditional values or, if, you know, for some reason you can't regularly attend church, at least have some good, strong Christians with whom you can fellowship on a regular basis, study the Bible together, pray together, things like that. That's your small Christian family, your, 
your local church or your small fellowship group, and then all the Christians worldwide, that's your big Christian family. You need both. The arm needs the eye. Even though the eye is so small, we don't say, oh, that's meaningless. The eye, of course, needs the arm. And that's why we're the body. And we need to keep all members healthy, be fully functional. So you care about each other like like the arm, like the left arm would care about the right arm. You don't say, ah, oh, that's, you don't compete with the right arm. Left arm say, I'm better than the right arm. No, no, you don't do that. You know that. Same in the body of Christ. You should be real aware of that. Okay, and so take those, start putting those four steps into practice, and uh, read a little bit more in the box below, YouTube information, description, I mean has nothing to do with YouTube, but it's just on YouTube. And then uh, if you have any questions or for a free Bible, please message me on YouTube, and I'll happily try to help you as best as I can. I'm an evangelist. Uh, I've studied the Bible and theology and things like that. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself an expert, not like a PhD or something like that, but I can answer pretty good general questions, and you know, by and large. I've got a lot of experience with churches and studying and reading the Bible, reading theology, church history, things like that. You know, I got a basic college degree and some seminary education, things like that. But that's not the uh, most important thing. Let's not put the cart before the horse. What matters is, is being in Christ, believing in Christ, putting your faith in Christ, and growing in Christ, telling others about Christ. All right. So God be with you and bless you in Carpinteria. I'll be praying for you and ask other Christians worldwide to pray for any new Christians there. Lord, we pray for all the new Christians in Carpinteria. Be with them, guide them, lead them. Show them the way. Fill them up with your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all the fruit of the Spirit. Give them the faith they need to love you and stay with you and believe in you and stay committed to you with all their heart, mind, strength, and soul. And the courage to tell others about you, to tell the gospel, the good news of you, Jesus Christ our Savior, everywhere they go. Pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.